All right, good morning, PT on Ice Daily Show. It is Thursday, coming at you from CrossFit Tour of our West here in Fenton, Michigan, but we're not going to talk fitness athlete today. We're going to talk some clinic management stuff on this Thursday morning. I'm your host, Alan, CEO of ICE, and we'll get started here talking about um, how to know who to hire and when. So uh, Jeff and I do some some consulting, different clinics bring us in. We look at a lot of different stuff. We look at their numbers, we look at their staffing, we kind of look at how their clinic flows. And a question we get a lot is how to know um, who you should be hiring. So you're getting busy, we're, we're really busy, who should we hire? Should we hire a, another PT, another full therapist? Should we hire a PTA? Or should we look for a, a tech or aid, whatever, whatever term you want to use for that person? Um, so that depends that's kind of a cop-out answer but that depends and we'll talk about why it depends and kind of what parameters you should be looking at to determine when you should uh, hire a PT hire a PTA or maybe just hire a tech so we've talked about waiting lists on here before and that's going to be the kind of critical determinant to know when you need a full full-time PT or if you can get away with a PTA or a tech so what does your waiting list look like we've talked on here before that a long waiting list is kind of doing both a disservice to your patients right they're they're waiting for care and it's also doing a disservice to your business you're sitting on money if you have a three week four week five week six week waiting list that's awesome for your ego but bad for your business bad for those patients so if you find yourself having a long waiting list maybe uh two three four weeks and you find yourself with a consistently long waiting list so that's not just a fluke right that is consistently that long no matter how many people you can pull from that waiting list and get them on the books for an evaluation, your waiting list seems to be that long, then it's probably time for a full physical therapist, right? You need somebody to come in, take those patients on that waiting list and build a full caseload and, and get rolling with that. You have another caseload's worth of patients that your clinic can handle. If you have a longer waiting list but it seems to fluctuate maybe it seems to be seasonal um, or kind of ebbs and flows it's not always consistent then that's when you need to maybe consider a, a PRN PT somebody to come in and just get those those evals set for you um, get those people from the the eval stage into the treatment stage get your waiting list cleared up and then get those people into to treatment appointments and in moving forward through their plan of care so that's kind of when to know when you need a full-time PT handling their own caseload or when you can get away with somebody that is PRN um, if that is not consistent your waitlist is not consistent um, or you just don't seem to have that many evaluations but you are struggling with finding times in your schedule for or the treatment times for those patients who are on your waiting list, then that's when we want to start to look at hiring a, a PTA or a tech to help with those treatment sessions. Um, and you, you probably want one of those anyways, at least PRN, um, because that helps a lot with people who uh, may call in sick or people who want to go on vacation, right? People like to do stuff besides just work all day, every day. So you want to have somebody available, PRN, no matter what, if you can swing it, having them uh, available from time to time. So if you are able to cover the evaluations, uh, but you need help with follow-up treatments, then we're looking at, do we hire a PTA or do we hire a tech? So PTAs are able to treat independently. We run into some clinic owners and clinic managers who don't know that or who don't use them to their full capacity like that. They, um, they think that a PTA has to be observed 100% of the time in person, which is just not the case. Um, you don't need to be physically watching them. They just, you need to be reached by communication, telecommunication, right? So um, you can be somewhere else in the clinic. Um, maybe you need to leave early that day. As long as you're reachable by telecommunication, that PTA can treat independently, right? We see this happen very often in home health settings um, and acute care settings where the PTA is kind of out on their own treating folks independently once the PT has evaluated the patient. That being said, don't, don't abuse that, right? Um, being reachable by telecommunication means um, that you are working on the job maybe or, or, or nearby um, local and you're easily reached um, for consultation with the PTA. It does not mean you should go to the Bahamas and uh, leave, leave all your patients to the PTA, right? So there is some sort of reasonable amount of, of reachability there when utilizing a PTA. Um, surprisingly, and, and 
most folks don't know this is that a PTA commands a pretty similar pay rate to a PT, right? They can perform almost all of the same treatments and they can bill the exact same codes as a PT. Um, they don't have an NPI and they do bill under their supervising PT, but that being said, they can still perform manual therapy, they can perform Therax, they can work on gait and balance and kind of neuro re -ed stuff. Um, they can use modalities, so they can they can charge all the same codes as a PT, and because of that, they usually command a pretty similar salary. So looking at some salary data, data a PTA with one year of experience makes about 38000 but looking at a PTA with five or more years of experience, they, they can ask about 77000 on average. So pretty similar to a, a PT salary. <clears throat> I know most of the, the veteran PTAs I interact with certainly make as much or more as me as a, a newer graduate. So um, that's something to keep in mind as well, is that they don't think of PTAs as the cheap choice for staffing, right? Because they, they will command a pretty similar pay rate because they can do a lot of the same stuff and bill for it just the same. That will be changing theoretically um, in 2020 with some of the Medicare cap changes. Um, a change that's written to go into effect is that um, reimbursement for treatment by a PTA will be a little bit less than a PT, but that's not yet implemented, and, and I know um, different organizations are fighting that, so that may not even go into effect, but that's something to consider, that eventually their reimbursement will be a little bit less, similar to when you go to see your physician, and if you see the MP or the PA, that office visit is technically supposed to be a little bit cheaper because you are not seeing the physician, you are seeing you know an extender, um, a physician extender. So that may happen with PTAs, but we, we don't know because we're not there yet. It's not yet 2020. So keep that in mind. Um, so now what about, what about techs and aides? So PT techs, PT aides, whatever you call them at your clinic, what about them? Um, I think they get a really bad rap. Um, kind of when you think of these folks, you think of this, this army of, of high school students treating patients and, and kind of just standing around the clinic, wiping down tables and stuff. Um, and it, but it doesn't have to be that way, right? That kind of low quality we associate with these folks um, doesn't have to be that way. We are completely in charge of, of how much training these folks have, of how much interaction they have with our patients, um, what these folks can do, and what we can bill for depends a lot, very heavily, on what state you're in and what insurance company the patient they're working with has, right? So all the way from not reimbursable at all for Medicare patients and some other third-party payers to other third-party payers who have no restrictions whatsoever on these folks. Um, so like I said, their training and the, the quality of these folks is entirely proportional to what you do with them, right? You can certainly hire a high school student and pay them minimum wage and, and get uh, lower quality work output from these folks, but you can hire somebody with a bachelor's degree and give them some training, uh, maybe send them for some certifications, get them their, their CSCS or personal training certification or something and, and bring them up to speed a little bit on education and training and actually make them a, wor a worthwhile employee, right? I've seen the entire gamut in clinics from from those high school students making minimum wage who um, act like they make minimum wage, right? I've always said, um, you know, if you pay minimum wage, you get minimum wage results. Um, but I've seen that spectrum all the way to folks who kind of make a career out of it, right? They're a career PT tech or, or PT aide. They have a lot of education. They've gone to a lot of coursework. Um, they, they may be a salaried employee with benefits, and they that it kind of shows, right? They take their job seriously. They act like professionals. Um, and you can trust a lot of work to those folks. So where, where you place those folks on the continuum in your clinic is entirely up to you, how much you want to invest in them. Um, the, the less you invest in an employee, the, the poorer their work output and quality tends to be, right? That kind of holds across pretty much every industry, not just PT. Um, minimum wage to me says, uh, I'm paying you the least legal amount I have to, right? I'd probably pay you less if I could get away with it. That's what, that's what minimum wage says to me. So um, the turnover with these folks is often related to their wages, and it's often related to how much work we put on them, right? They probably shouldn't be working with patients independently. Um, they should have PT supervision. What I like to do with my Texan aides is, is give them EMOMs, REMOMs, AMRAPs, right? So we've talked about that concept a lot on Fitness Athlete Fridays, but, but designing an EMOM or REMOM or an, or an AMRAP workout, a couple different movements with a timer, instructing these folks 
on the, the movements we're working on, the weights we've chosen, and the points of performance for the movements, and then having them kind of just control the timer, cue the patient through the exercises. Um, pretty simple task, pretty simple way to, to utilize these techs and aids in the clinic to, to do Therex um, in a pretty safe and, and reasonable environment. Um, also on that same note, there's nothing that says you can't have your tech or aid ask about asterisk signs with your patients, right? How, when the patient comes into the clinic, hey, how are you feeling? How's your pain level today? How did you sleep? How is your overhead motion today? Have you noticed that thing that the PT talked to you about at your evaluation? How is that different, right? So, you know, if Doris says she has a lot of pain trying to put her seatbelt on, there's nothing that says you can't train that tech to ask about Doris's ability to put her seatbelt on that morning, right? That helps you out a little bit at the start of the visit, um, asking some of that subjective and objective data. Taking things like blood pressure is certainly not um, outside of the scope of these folks. Most of them have a bachelor's degree or some even have a master's degree. Some of them are PT students, right? They're able to take all of that, that data for you, which helps you on the front end. As I said before, the, the amount of training and time you invest in these folks is entirely up to you. So if you give them no training and just they kind of just stand in the, the corner looking at Instagram, um, that's, that's your fault, right? Um, take a little bit of ownership, train these folks up on how to gather asterisk signs, gather subjective and objective data, how to take blood pressure, how to conduct an EMOM or an AMRAP type workout with your patients, you get a lot higher quality output from these folks. Um, and like I said, if, if you pay minimum wage, you should expect to get minimum wage results. That goes across every single um, sector of employment. If you treat your employees well, they tend to stick around. They tend to work pretty hard for you. Um, and, and overall, the turnover is less with these folks. And I think what's kind of underpinning all of this when you're looking to hire new PTs, new PTAs, or, or techs or aides, is that you should s tell your patients that you treat as a team, right? Hey, um, I just want you to know you're, you're seeing me today for the evaluation. You'll see me for some portion of your treatment. I'll try to make it as much of your, your treatment as it can possibly be, but I do treat as a team. And then inter introduce the patients to the team, right? Hey, this is Steve. He's the, he's the PTA. You'll be working with him a lot. Um, this is this is Nancy. She is our technician. She works a lot with Steve and I. You'll be working with them. They have my full confidence. Um, they have all of this training. You can list their training or not, but introduce them to the team. Tell them that you treat as a team so that when they come <laughs> next time to the clinic, they're not completely ambushed by working with a stranger, right? We, we mess this up all the time. We do the evaluation and then we hand the patient off and we never tell the patient and then the patient is thinking, where's, where's Alan? Where's that guy I worked with the first time? I really liked him. Where's he at? I never get to see him anymore. What's going on? So don't, don't just blindly hand these folks off. Introduce your team. Let them know that you treat as a team and that they'll be seeing a couple different folks. That makes that, that shock of, of never getting to see you again as the PT um, a lot easier to handle. Let them know that these folks are, are competent, they're trained well, and, and that you trust them to help out with the patient's care, and it will go a lot better, right? The, the patients will understand, but only if you tell them. If, if you hand them off and they never see you again, they're just always going to be wondering what happened to you, why they don't get to see you anymore. And they're, they're kind of used to that from their other experiences in the healthcare system, right? They see the physician the first visit, and after that, they see the PA or the nurse practitioner the rest of the time, right? They're, they understand, but it makes them really jaded. Um, it's something I hear from my patients a lot, <laughs> kind of in that jaded tone. Well, I have a follow-up with my surgeon, but I'll probably just see the PA. I don't get to see the surgeon anymore. I'm not important enough anymore, right? So it, it does make them jaded. So if you have that communication up front that you treat as a team, um, that you, they'll still get to see you, but they'll be working with some members of your team, that transition will go so much smoother. So that's it. That's all I've got to say. Um, in, in to kind of review, how busy are you? Let your waiting list determine that. If your waiting list is full and it's consistently full, then it's probably time for another full PT. If your waiting list is full but it's not consistent, then maybe you need to consider a, a PRN PT. If you are kind of full but it kind of ebbs and flows you can sometimes take on new evaluations but you really struggle with 
getting those folks treatment appointments, then maybe it's time for a PTA or a PRN PTA. And then if kind of in general you just need help around the clinic, especially with maybe just running folks through some exercises, then you may want to consider a tech or aid. But a couple things to consider there. Look at your state laws. Look at the common insurances you work with and see to know um, if you can bill for that time, if those folks can even see those patients, um, or if you need to be looking at uh, a PTA based on your state laws and the insurances that you commonly see. So look at your waiting list. That will determine kind of where you go in a kind of a flow sheet type approach to hiring a PT, a PTA, or a tech. Upcoming courses this weekend, Jeff is in Rochester, Minnesota at uh, Mayo Clinic doing a lumbar course. And then next weekend, pretty busy weekend next weekend, November 3rd and 4th, Mitch is going to be down in Schmyrna, which is outside of Nashville, Tennessee, teaching fitness athlete live at CrossFit VTG. Jeff is going to be out in Santa Barbara, California, teaching cervical spine. And Jess Davis will be up in Portland, Oregon, teaching our performing artist management course. So that's what we've got going on for the next week or so. Uh, hope you have a great weekend. I'm getting ready to uh, get another uh, workout or two in here at the gym and then jump on a plane heading down to Nashville with Mitch and some of the coaches here for an aerobic capacity specialty course down at CrossFit Mayhem. So I'm hoping to meet Rich Froning. Maybe. We'll see. Have a great weekend. Have a great Thursday. See you out there.